All right, here with Seattle City Council member Shama Sawant representing D3. That's that's our district right there, the Central District in Capitol Hill. Uh, Council member Sawant, want to jump right into it this morning. Uh, it's got this release here yesterday that said that you're in full support of Africa Town and what they want to do with the Cairo development there on Yesler in the Central District. Tell us about it. We've seen in the last decade the entire city being denuded of its working class population and marginalized communities because of the skyrocketing rents, the insane price of housing here. And uh, we've seen uh, tens of thousands of working people being pushed out of the city, facing longer commutes, and we're seeing escalating homelessness as well. So in addition to the pandemic and the recession that ordinary people are being faced with right now, we already had a housing affordability crisis and the sharpest point of this housing affordability crisis, of course, has been seen in the fact that the central district, which used to be uh, over 80 percent black at one time, is now, you know, in 2016, the statistics showed it was less than 18 percent black. And now it's even less than that. So it is really a mission for those of us who are fighting against racism and for housing affordability and for this city to be affordable and livable for all of us, regardless of income, not just for the rich. It is important that we push forward on housing affordability on every front. And this project from Africa Town is a very important opportunity for us to bring in some affordable housing in our district. And it's right on Yesler. This is the kind of affordable housing we want where we have our community come back and live in the central district. Right. And now the, you're looking for thirteen point eight million dollars. Um, that money would go to to actually purchase the property. And in the short term, it would be uh, uh, basically a shelter for people who need immediate, immediate housing and then ultimately developed into a larger, larger permanent housing development. Thirteen point eight million dollars. Where do you want that to come from? You know, if you look at the proposed budget from the mayor and in fact, this is it's an important time uh, when we are discussing the funding of the Africa Town affordable housing opportunity because the city council is right now considering the mayor's budget and it is deeply tragic and at the same time quite shameful that Mayor Durkin has sent a budget to the city council which actually strips any so funding for affordable housing. In fact, affordable housing funds have been reduced in our budget by nearly $50 million. And if you look at the overall budget cuts that ordinary people and our marginalized communities are facing, it is over $200 million. Cuts to affordable housing, cuts to transit, cuts to parks and community centers, and even pools. So all of the services that our most marginalized rely on are on the chopping block. But what's not on the chopping block is the massive profits made by the pandemic profiteers like Amazon, like Microsoft, like F5, like Starbucks. I am mentioning corporations which are celebrating record profits during the pandemic when so many of us are facing unemployment and loss of income and the inability to even pay rents. So $13 million is a very small amount compared to the profits that these corporations are making. It is also a very small amount compared to the very bloated Seattle police budget. So one way that the council could uh, fund this project, which is completely affordable as far as the city's budget is concerned, is to increase the uh, tax rate in the Amazon tax that our movement won earlier this summer, uh, or alternately, the city could uh, take away some of the bloated money from the police budget, which is uh, you know a, a nearly four hundred million dollar budget, and fund these thirteen million dollars. So, in other words, there are legal options available to the city council. The question is, is there political will? And that's where ordinary people come in because we will have to build a movement to win this. Right. And my, my last question right there, political will. What do you how much support do you think that this has there on the council? What are the chances of, of this getting through and thirteen point eight million dollars being provided there to fund this project? Well, you know, all year since the Justice for George Floyd movement broke out in uh, with you know tens of millions of Americans on the street in multiracial solidarity against racism, uh, and specifically police violence targeted at black communities around the nation. 
We have seen politicians throughout this uh, country, including the democratic politicians in this city saying black lives matter. And so now it is up to ordinary people to get together, get organized and ask if politicians say black lives matter, what does it actually mean? Will this budget that it will be passed by the city council in November be a moral document that shows actually that black lives matter? And if black lives matter, then all kinds of affordable housing funds should be included in the budget, not just this Cairo project, but at least this Cairo project should be absolutely supported by the council. And whether we will win this or not will really depend on those of us who are watching if we will get involved and fight for it. I mean, I will tell, give you another example. In 2016, many young black and brown people fought on the front lines to stop what they call the bunker at the North Seattle, which was $116 million being dedicated for a new police station, which was not necessary because I visited the existing one. Uh, and I know that for a fact. Uh, but we were able to push back on that uh, the uh, uh, that campaign and then block the bunker one. But out of those $116 million, we were able to win nearly $30 million for affordable housing. And that was one because people came together with the people's budget movement. And this time we have both the people's budget and the solidarity budget, which and the people's budget is standing with the solidarity budget. So I think we can accomplish this, but we cannot simply just tell the city council, please do this because we, we don't see that works. What works is organizing in the grassroots. All right, council member Shama Sawan, D3, my home district. Uh, we're gonna be checking back in with you and uh, seeing how this progresses. Some of those some of those council meetings are real long though, but, uh, <laughs> but we'll keep monitoring the progress. Yes, in fact, sometimes they make the they make the discussion so boring because then it becomes inaccessible to ordinary people. You know, me, council meetings should be something that the public can engage in, and that is what uh, my office strives for. Right on. Thank you so much, Council Member Sawant.